Uh, we are coming to a closing part of our two-day session uh, in a, we are in a, a stretch run and uh, I hope everybody can keep their original spirit up and uh, we can have a one hour of very interesting session about the new media. I think uh, we have talked a lot uh, over the last uh, uh, some sessions over the last two days and uh, we have a uh, good array of uh, speakers for this topic of new media uh, from the consulting industry, also from mobile industry and also the community, the social network industry and uh, uh, portals also. Uh, I will not surprise you by saying in my introduction that I will very much focus on, on mobile business, of course, but I will try, as, as you suggested, to uh, complete what I will say around mobile media and especially mobile TV, because we have chosen to take one concrete example of the media capacity of the mobile, being direct TV programs. Uh, Korea being, of course, uh, the most advanced country in the world for mobile TV, and uh, we also have mobile TV in France, not broadcast, but uh, unicast mobile TV. I will try to uh, integrate into this vision what we have already learned so far from Web 2.0 on the mobile business, and especially since we strongly believe, I strongly believe, uh, that uh, 207, uh, H2207, in fact, is really, at least in Europe, only the start of real uh, mobile web and mobile internet with a, a new dimension of it, and 208 will be an essential year for this, uh, for this reason in our business. So very shortly, uh, as an introduction, just a, a, a comment, which more a comment than, than anything more, which is that the mobile phone has definitely been the full screen after movies, theaters, television, and computer. The mobile screen is definitely the full screen uh, on which more and more consumers are used to not only look at text messages or MMS multimedia messages, but more and more video, contents, text, and, and of course other features. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the future of media. Uh, so some of the trends that are changing how people are consuming media. So the first one is that broadband adoption uh, is really increasing the amount of time spent online. And you see that in, in Korea more than any place else, because in Korea you have such a developed IT infrastructure here with 100 megabit throughput to the home uh, that you, you, you actually have IP television, which we don't have in the United States and we don't have in most places in the world. Anytime that you have this very high throughput, you can deliver much more rich services. So some of the things that um, uh, Mr. Trunk was talking about over the mobile phone, but you can do similar things over the uh, computer network as well. So one thing that we've observed in the last five years is that time spent on online uh, media consumption has almost doubled to 11 hours per week. So in only five years, we've gone from about six hours a week to 11 hours per week, and this is displacing time spent in other media like magazines and newspapers and radio in particular. Now, around the world, the uh, adoption of broadband technology is uneven. Like I said, South Korea leads the world in broadband deployment to the home, with nearly 80% of all homes in Korea having broadband connectivity. Not only that, but the connectivity here is much higher than it is in many other markets. So in the United States, while 46% of homes have broadband, our broadband is more in the range of uh, between 500K to 1 megabit throughput. That, that is um, very, very slow compared to Korea, where you have 100 megabits. Um, and then you can see what the deployment is in other markets. So just as we've seen the usage of online media increase dramatically in the last five years in the U.S., there's still an enormous upside potential for the consumption of online media all around the world. Anyone can be a consumer, even you. There are an increasing percentage of URLs in social media versus author authoritative or traditional media. This means that the share of traditional media is decreasing. It gets worse. Social media sites uh, consume huge share of, of the total time online. 
Social media sites are also becoming the filter and distribution channel for all media. Is there hope? Yes, but only if corporations let go of control of content. There are opportunities to engineer virality for quality content using friend networks, address books, and social bookmarking. There are also opportunities to buy sites and partner with sites in the social media space and add social media expertise. Consumers are competing for dollars, not just content. They are starting businesses because there are low entry costs, and they are making money. Two and a half billion dollars went to small content creators last year through AdSense. My own story, I grew my yearbook from one high school to four plus million members. The way I did this was engineering virality. That means that every feature I created for my yearbook, I created a widget for as well. This widget could be posted on MySpace, Facebook, multiple blogs, and that drew users from those sites onto my yearbook because they, because uh, their friends on the other networks were able to see our content. By engineering virality, we achieved our first million members in 12 months, and we are now adding a million members every two months. Not only is our social, is social media so popular, but it's also extremely addicting. On my yearbook, the average user spends 54 minutes a day consuming social media, and they also log in 3.6 times a day. The consumer is becoming a force. 500,000 new MySpace and Facebook profiles are added every day. A new blog is created every second of every day. Wikipedia is 12 times larger than Encyclopedia Britannica, just as accurate, and it's free. 100 million videos are watched a day on YouTube, and 65,000 videos are added every day. So why is social media so popular? So this is going to be a challenge, and even higher challenge, a bigger challenge for our fellow from Orange, who unfortunately left. So I think I will be sharing with you four hypotheses, and as you know, consultants uh, do like working with hypotheses. Fortunately, today, um, I had prepared four hypotheses, and uh, trust me, this presentation was uh, held a few weeks ago already in Berlin. Uh, so the content is the same. I held it yesterday in Paris. And today I can only say my previous speaker just confirmed the four messages. So obviously there is certain global trend. There is a truth. So I'm happy as a consultant that my hypotheses are also validated in Seoul today. And it's a pleasure to have the author, my colleague from Arthur Little Korea, he's called Lee, please stand up, who has just published his book today. Can you take the book and show it to the audience, please? And he's describing more the framework in detail where the use is the center and that the winner in the future will be the one who master the service integration and they're relying on three key assets. The access player, the system player, and the content player. And the last slide shows an application example, a case study of why the old value chain cannot give you any reflection anymore. If you look at Google today, the business model of uh, Google, you see that they have a platform, they don't have a network, no terminal, no content, but it's very difficult to say, if you look at this, that Google has a sound service portfolio. Is it? It looks very empty. If you look at it from the perspective of the user, it's enormously rich. So that shows that actually Google has a very sound service portfolio with multiple service and with service that is really integrated and very close to the consumer. And you see here on this slide, the areas that are dominated by Google, where they have made direct investment, and where they have partnership. Vodafone partnership on the access side, Dell on the device side, uh, Sony, Warner on the content side. So this gives you a much better framework to assess the performance of a new edge media company, sustainable one in the future. And this is the last slide I wanted to share with you, providing you, confirming the four hypotheses, and I'm very pleased that my predecessor demonstrated actually that it's happening. And last but not least, 
keep in mind the new way of looking at the value chain to assess the performance of a new next generation media sustainable company. Thank you very much.